Hello again everybody. How are you doing today? I hope you're doing good and hope you're making it through this uh, problems that we having lately. Uh, you know sometimes you run across people that just aren't satisfied and when you get on Facebook you run across a lot of people who are not satisfied. And there's also a lot of people who are not satisfied with God's Word. It doesn't quite give them what they're looking for. And they, they eventually end up just rejecting God's Word. And so sometimes they even get to the point where they express in volatile terms uh, how much they hate the Bible. Or they hate the one who wrote the Bible, God. See, Jesus said the Bible are the words of truth. And so, honestly, these people, uh, they hate the truth. They don't like the truth. It doesn't fit in their agenda. It doesn't fit in their lifestyle. And so, when we recognize the Bible comes from God, these people are rejecting God. You know, Jesus said something similar to his disciples. He says, you're, you're going to go out and if people reject you, well, they're not really rejecting you, they're rejecting me. And if they're rejecting me, they're rejecting the one who sent me. So these people reject the giver of these words. So what really becomes a tragedy is, and we know that's going to happen, but when people who are professed followers of God's word get, around, get to the point where they also deny the Bible. They, they're, they're not satisfied with God's Word. They don't like what it says, so they have to change it uh, to fit their lifestyle. And so, the real problem here is sin. People like their sin. You know, in Jeremiah chapter 6, uh, God was talking about how the people were wicked, they, they acted evil, and they, they wanted their prophets to tell them lies so they would feel good about themselves. And Jeremiah said, and the people love it so. So, uh, sin is the big problem. Sin has entered our lives, and we're involved in it personally. And if we have had the blessing of having our sins removed, we also know that the possibility of our sins returning is always there. So we have to be ready for that. And sometimes we have loved ones or family or acquaintances who have gotten involved in the sin of rejecting God. So uh, God has given us instructions to us through his word and how we're to live and behave in this world. And often the sin which so easily besets us, as we read in Hebrews 12.1, uh, it sidetracks us from doing what we know we should do or allows us to go ahead and do what we know we should not do. So this presents a problem for us. And, you know, and nobody's exempt from this. Everybody goes through this. Everybody has to make a choice every day. Am I going to do what God told me to do, or am I going to let the world take over and just do what I feel like doing? So we, we go into that, and, you know, even Paul expressed that in Romans chapter 7. He talked about the dilemma he was facing because his, his body wanted to do one thing and his mind wanted to do something else. And he said, it's there. In Galatians chapter 5, he told them the, the spirit is at war or enmity with the flesh. And so what we want personally from our own selfishness it may not be what God wants. And therefore, we're going to have a conflict and we're going to have to resolve that conflict if uh, we want to continue on. So how do we resolve that conflict? Well, God teaches us to study his word so the, we will know how we're supposed to behave. How we're supposed to behave when we're around our family, how we're supposed to behave when we're at church with our brethren, or how we're supposed to behave when we're out in the world trying to influence and let our light shine to helping those who are non-believers. And so he, he wants us to know these things, and so he gave us the Bible for us to study it. But the problem is, so many people have a distaste for God's Word, and why? 
Well, it's be because it condemns what they want to do. And so when this happens, they either outright reject God's word and do what they want, or for some, they will try and sneak around God's word by using human reasoning and other scriptures out of context that allows what they are doing to continue. But they still want to feel right in front of God. So even though God calls something a sin, they're going to go along and they're going to find some way which will ease their conscience where they will continue in their sin but yet not feel bad about it. And they will have this idea, well, God's looking out for me and God's taking care of me. And, I mean, it's not... It doesn't happen that way. So, and what this is, we're going to explain it, is because this is the foundation of every false teaching that's in, exist in existence. See, it is always trying to find a way that is logical enough to ease the conscience, even though they're not doing it all. We have many religious groups out there. They claim to be followers of Christ, and yet they leave things out. Sometimes they add things to the worship and, and to the, the, the rules of God. And we know neither one of those is going to profit anybody anything. So what the Bible teaches is to be taught in its purity and its simplicity. Just because the words do not ap appeal to us does not give us the right to take away or add to the message of the scriptures. You know, in Jeremiah chapter 42, verses 5 and 6, the people says, well, yeah, we're, we're going to listen. God is our witness if we're going to do these things or not. And whether the words are pleasant or not, we will do what the Lord tells us to do. When Jeremiah gave them the message from God, the people said, well, Jeremiah, you're just a liar. And so we, we see this. Sometimes some people will choose one scripture that they think is is the out for their particular doctrine, but they ignore the rest of scriptures. You know, might be an example, divorce and remarriage. People go to Deuteronomy chapter 24, verses 1 through 3, says, see, it was okay. But we find out from the words of Jesus that God put that provision in there to protect a certain class of people, the women. And... But people use that as an excuse. Well, I can go divorce and then I can remarry again without any consequences. That just flies in the face of other passages of Scripture where Jesus said, if you do this, you're committing adultery. And so it's just these false doctrines that come around. People use one verse against another. Sometimes you say, well, here's what the Bible says. Well, that's not right because over in this other passage it says this. All right. They, they, they say, well, there's a maybe there's a contradiction there. Well, we know God is not the author of confusion. 1 Corinthians 14, 33 tells us that. So when man has a problem, when man is confused about something, it's not God who caused it. It's because man is not willing to be accepting the word. In other words, he's abusing text to satisfy his pretext. See, also, a lot of people put their think-sos in there. You know, I think. This is what I feel. It just seems to me. Proverbs 16, 25 says, There's a way which seems right to a man, but its end is the way of death. And then Proverbs 16, 2 says, Every way of man is right in his own eyes. And, of course, that's the world we live in today. That's, that's true. We live in that kind of world where... Everybody chooses for themselves what is right for themselves. And if you have a different standard, well, you don't have the right to tell me that I'm wrong. In fact, um, that, that, that anybody who tells you that you're wrong, you're basically going to reject. Well, at least that's the way most of the world is. So, and here, here's how it works as far as this false doctrine. See, we read that uh, God is a God of love. And so the human reasoning says, well, God is so loving, he, he is not cruel where he's going to punish people for things they don't know. Like, they can't help it, ignorance. Uh, they, they, if people don't know about it, then how can he be so cruel to do that? But yet the scripture in Second Thessalonians chapter 1 
It says God is going to execute his vengeance upon those who know not God and keep not his commandments. So, when you say God is love, that contradicts the fact that he is going to execute judgment upon these people. And see, they say that God is love. For John 4, 8, and an act of love. So, 2 Thessalonians 1, 6, and 9 does not apply to us today. Wow. Did you see how easy that was to get out? See, that's my point. It is easier to appeal to human emotions than to tell people that God requires a certain expectation of them and all mankind. Those who don't know God, they're going to be facing a bitter punishment, and those who decide they don't want to follow God's commandments, they're going to be facing this bitter punishment that God is going to execute. So, when we see people who reject God's word, basically they're rejecting God. And so if we're trying to teach God's word and they reject our teaching, it's, it's pretty much the same thing. They're still rejecting God. And so, in, and in a symbolic way, it's like he's saying, trampling underfoot everything God stands for. In fact, the, the Savior and salvation, everything that God gave us in Hebrews 10, 29, it's like we're insulting the spirit of grace. And so these people are not obeying the truth because they despise God's words. All right, so the question is, are you guilty of this? And so keep, keep these thoughts in mind and realize that if you reject the word of God as it's presented in his word, then you're not satisfied with the word of God. And most people, they just don't read the Bible at all. I mean, it, it doesn't satisfy them. It, it tells them that they should be living a different way, and they don't like that. So people are going to be doing that. All right, so that's our lesson for today. Keep these thoughts in mind. All right, we're, we're going to um, wrap it up here. So I want you all to have a nice, safe, blessed day. Uh, be praying, continue praying, check in on your, your brethren, check in on others, uh, check in on the elderly, your family, and everybody else. And uh, hopefully, Lord willing, we'll see you tomorrow. All right, bye-bye for now.